Welcome to Machines and More. If you've ever spun up the fan blades of the Noctua NFA 12x25, then you know that feeling I'm talking about. That impossibly buttery smooth spinning bearing, the solid heft of the whole ensemble, and these thick blades that exhibit basically no wobble. And I've never seen that in another fan until now. We've got another one here that exudes that same level of confidence. And today we've got a monumental product, a brand new 120 millimeter fan from Fantex. Of course, most of us are a bit more familiar with Fantex for their cases, but as the company's name might suggest, they do in fact make fans. And now after testing this one, they don't just make fans. They make a very serious fan. Although at 30 millimeters, it does have a five millimeter <laughs> advantage. And we'll touch on that in just a little bit. But first off, thanks to Fantex for letting us review these. They did provide the fans for testing, but as with all our product reviews here, I have been paid. They haven't contributed materially to the testing methodology. And this video will also be the first time they see my review feedback. This new 120 millimeter fan is dubbed the T30 and Vantex is calling it the ultimate fan. And this is an out and out performance oriented fan designed from the ground up by Vantex, unlike some copycat products we've seen on the market lately. Of course, there are some other features about this fan and its design that I'll share, but for this review, and I know for many of you that headline feature is that, oh, it's not tan and brown, but hey, let's talk about the real elephant in the room first. And that's the performance here. So in my mind, we really only need to compare performance with this one fan. And this is the Nocto NFA 12x25. Many of you know how much I like these guys. And this one is the best performing 120 millimeter fan on the market. Now, if the T30 can beat it, then it's the performance champion in this realm. So to kick things off, I'm actually gonna do this one a little bit differently. And let's lead off with the acoustic comparisons because noise normalized testing is the most important test finding that I typically present for fans and coolers. And so I'll start at the 0.4 decibel over the noise floor mark, because that is the point that noise starts to actually matter for these fans, because below this RPM level, which is about 1200 for both fans, 1250 on this one, they actually pretty much sound and measure out the same way. Decibel measurements are taken 30 centimeters away and pointed at three fans on a 360 millimeter radiator. If you do crank up your volume to hear the differences between th these two fans, do be forewarned. The T30 does go above 2000 RPM and I do include two sound bites above that. So past that point, it's gonna get loud. These things move a ton of air at 3000 RPM and yeah, they seem loud, but I've actually had stock AIO fans at 2000 RPM that measure in as loud or louder than these at 3000 RPM. So overall, this motor is great. There's low noise, no whine of, or abnormal noise at any of the RPM levels tested. And since we know the RPMs that produce equivalent noise levels, let's examine the thermal performance at each interval and for that we're testing on a cooler master mf 700 recently built up on the channel this is an open air chassis and on that i have the ek 360 millimeter rad it's simple custom loop here with the i9 10850k locked to 4.9 gigahertz at 1.25 volts at this level about 240 watts of total package power and all testing is done with three fans pointed in the same direction GPU is idling here, and with the exception of the fans and the respective RPMs, no other variable was changed. This DDC pump was indeed locked to 3000 RPM. Between each test, the system was allowed to sit idle in order for the coolant to return to the idle equilibrium. And this interval was typically about 30 minutes, and then I would fire up the three consecutive blender renders again. So getting into our first test at the lower 0.4 decibel noise level, the Fantex enjoys a slight RPM advantage. It spins at 1250, versus the 1200 from the Noctua, but it's really not the 50 RPM that's responsible for this gap. And seriously, this is a significant gap. About three and a half to four degrees on the CPU package temp and for the coolant, about two and a half to three degrees in the long run. 
we're talking about the best 120 millimeter fan already. It, that does get better for the Noctua a little bit. At the next interval, which is 1.6 decibels above the noise floor, the Fantex does lose its RPM advantage and we see it spinning at 1580 versus the 1600 on the Noctua. Still though, the T30 with what I would call a significant advantage, about two degrees on the CPU and one degree or so consistently on the coolant temp. For the last of our noise normalized testing, we do go to max, which is 2000 RPM on the Noctua, at which point the Fantex noise curve is about 50 RPM behind. And despite the lesser advantage here, the Fantex does in fact still lead by a fraction of a degree. And I'd say at this point, the difference really isn't that significant. At RPMs lower than the 1200 or so, the sonic differences are imperceptible. So let's normalize based on RPM. And if you have a ton of rads in your system, you might run all your fans at this low speed for noise concerns. So at 850 RPM for both fans, we're seeing that sizable advantage, similar to the 1200-ish level and the thermal gap is pretty similar. Yeah, the T30 absolutely kills it in the low to moderate RPM range. There's no disputing that. In the high RPM range, I'd argue that both fans are close enough. At 2000 RPM, there's not much of a difference, but you know, this T30 can do something that the Noctua can't. If you flip the fan around and on the hub, there's a switch that'll allow you to go to what they're calling advanced mode. And now this fan can go all the way to 3000 RPM if you need it. Of course, at this point, we are really past the point of diminishing returns, but it's kind of like having a Noctua Industrial or an EK Furious Vardar in your back pocket if you need it. I'd say the utility for such high RPMs really doesn't warrant the immensely increased noise levels, but hey, you might find it useful. So I think it's fairly clear between these two that the T30 is the best in the 120 millimeter class now, eclipsing the very high bar that was previously set by the NFA 12 by 25. So hey, let's move on to the material and the qualitative features here. So this fan frame and the blade assembly with seven chunky blades are made from a glass fiber reinforced liquid crystal polymer or LCP. And it's similar to other composites you might've heard of like Aramid or Kevlar. Now I didn't test if it's bulletproof, but you know, it's thick and substantial feel and suitable for PC applications. This is a fan built from quality materials. Now, this color scheme is fairly neutral. I like tan and brown, but I think few would argue that these will be a little bit easier to integrate with a variety of color schemes. Now the frame does measure in at 30 millimeters, so it is thicker than your so-called normal 25 millimeter thick fans. Uh, but because of the extra five millimeters, these blades have about 25% or so more height which really would explain the superior performance, especially at the lower levels of RPM, of the RPM range. And the sweep is just moving a lot more air per rotation than a shallower blade. And with these small rubber dampeners, they do measure in at 32 millimeters. Of course, Noctua is like 27 if you count the dampener, but that they are five millimeters thicker than your typical 120 millimeter fan may be a problem for some small form factor builds. But in plenty of cases or applications, five millimeters is available and that doesn't interfere with anything. And I love that Fantex includes two sets of 632 rad screws. One is 36 millimeters for attaching directly to a rad and the other is 39 millimeters for attaching to a case. And they've already alleviated one of the biggest headaches for having an out of spec fan. If you wanna strap these to a heat sink, you absolutely can. This depends obviously on your heat sink fan clips. And not that I'd bother switching out the stock fans on the U12A, but the clips do stretch enough that you can fit the fans on at least this cooler here. So it is possible. These bearings are smooth. This is the dual Vapo bearing system from Sunon. And it also features magnetic levitation technology. And based on the acoustics discussion, you've already seen this motor sounds pretty great. This is a three phase motor that has six windings or six poles. More poles aren't necessarily better, but can in fact result in lower noise. The Noctua does feature a four pole motor and it's still very quiet after all. And finally, this fan, just like the NFA 12, has a very low tip to frame clearance. I measured 0.5 millimeters on both, so it's it's similar. The blade is extremely well balanced and that contributes to that low turbulence and conversely, it's great performance. As I mentioned, this hub switch earlier has a an advanced mode and it comes shipped in this performance or the default mode, I guess you would call it. It's, it's up to 2000, zero to 2000. And then you can switch it into that advanced mode, which goes to zero to 3000 
or you can switch it to the first setting, which is hybrid mode, and that'll make it stay at zero RPM up to about 50% PWM. In my test, it was about 49%, close enough. And then it will top out only at 1200 RPM. Now, personally, I don't see that as a very useful feature, especially given how quiet these fans are under 1200 RPM, but hey, it's there. And for me, I would leave these either in advanced or performance mode and just set your fan curves accordingly. Now, I'm really not keen on the placement of this switch, since if you do need to change the setting, you might need to remove the fan depending on how you set it up. And that'll mean taking it off the case or the rad. So that is one slight downside. And in addition to the longer rad screws, you do also get regular fan screws and uh, you get an extension cable too. And the built-in cables actually do allow you to daisy chain the fans together. So if you have multiple ones of these on a rad, you can just connect them all together, which is great from a cable management perspective. It eliminates splitters and, and clutter, and it's something that the Noctuas don't offer. Now you can also add on a optional Fantex Halo RGB fan frame if you like. Of course, that'll further add to the fan height. So yeah, if you can fit the extra five millimeters, this for me is the fan to beat for 2021, and it is slightly more wallet friendly too at $30 a pop and $85 for a triple pack. And the Noctuas have seen a little bit of a price hike recently. But the main reason that you should get these fans is because I've never seen a fan blend in so well to its packaging material. I mean, this, these have to be made out of the same stuff, right? Seriously though, the Noctua has been the reigning 120 millimeter champ for a little over three years. And I think today that title changes hands to these T30s. I'm seriously impressed by these. If you have the extra five millimeters of space at lower RPMs, which are prevalent for rad fans, these are downright ridiculously good. And at the higher RPMs, which would be more common to heat sink fans, that gap is a little bit smaller, but I think these are still the better fan overall with thoughtfully included accessories. Judging by the performance of these fans, Fantex is using the word ultimate to imply that these are the best as opposed to the last one they'll ever make. At least I hope so, since I'd love to see a T25, a T15, hey, even a 140 millimeter version of these. Bravo, you, these guys have done an amazing job here. All right, this turned out to be a longer review, but deservedly, there was a lot of ground to cover with these fans. I hope you found the information helpful. I will be leaving links when they're available, so please give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching today.